did it feel having to leave your family and friends while she worked long hours down the pit? Uh, as natural, it's the same as any job that you get. Uh, you get up in the morning, you have a bit of breakfast if you have time, depending on what shift you're on, uh, you go to work. What was the daily routine for being a miner? You were up pretty early before you got to work. Uh, you'd go in, if smoke as you could see it, smoke because it's like now, they were stood outside having smoke, because you obviously know there was no smoking underground. Uh, and some people were heavy smokers. The first, first thing when you arrive at peak, you go, in t go into your locker room and get changed from, from the clean side to the other side, to your mucky side, and put your mucky clothes on. Then your next thing, you go in the lamp room and pick your checks up, your tool checks, one for going in and one for coming out, which is aluminium and a brass one. An example there of quite a number of checks and the wheels for a number of purposes. Initially introduced in early 1800s as a means of identification and as paychecks. So when you went to collect your wages at the end of the week, you would have to show your cheque in order to get your wages. As time developed, variations occurred, and in our time, we had two cheques when we got to the pit. One that we had to hand in before you went underground, the other you kept with you throughout your shift, and that had to be carried on you as we mentioned earlier on, if there'd been an explosion and they couldn't recognise you, the cheque was there to recognise you. And again, when you came out of the pit, you handed that cheque back in so that people knew that you were out of the pit. And if that cheque wasn't handed in, after a period of time, there would be a search system set up to check whether you had come out of the pit and just forgot to hand it in, or whether something had happened to you. So a very rigorous check as to where people were underground. winding engine basically pulls the cages out of the mine through a vertical shaft. So in this particular case uh, there was two cages in the, in the shaft. Obviously when one was at the top the other one was at the bottom and the winding engine has twin ropes on it, uh, one going off the top of the drum, one coming onto the bottom of the drum. So as one rope's being wound on to the drum the other one is being paid out and obviously the cages travel through the shaft. Rather like a, a, a straightforward lift system, basically. Right, from this position here, the winding engine room, what he has here is he's got a dial indicator and that works, that is actually the gate to the winder drum, so wherever the drum is, the indicator is giving a, a true position. He only actually works with one cage, when I said we've got two cages in the shaft earlier, uh, he only actually works with one cage, because obviously the other cage, wherever one is, the other is, a, a, is at the opposite end of the wind. So we've got a very, very simple system. The indicator is marked, so he's got various levels in the shaft, so when he gets a signal, which it's both audible and visual, the signals that come onto the board down that side of the engine. So he gets an instruction from the banksman and from the onsetter, and he can wind to that level. We've just got a code of signals, uh, and that's how, it, how the system works, basically. He's got a brake on the floor here. In this particular case, it's a manual brake. It's what we call a foot tram. So he just stands on the brake, rather like a, a pedal in a, a car or whatever, it just stands on the brake and that obviously slows the winder down. Uh, and there he has a power lever that gives him his power to the motor and depending which way he moves the lever, it also gives him direction, either forward or reverse. Um, a straightforward system. The winder has protection on it if, if the winding engine was to forget to do something then the protection system would come in. He's got overspeed protection, he's got end of wind protection, which stops him overwinding. Uh, 
and obviously he, he does get a warning before this happens, but if he ignores that warning, then the winder will automatically stop. Thank you.